I do IT work and I also do scheduling for them as well for about what six, almost seven years now. Um, How often it, have you met and seen Russell I knew Wilson? It. I know it was. <laughs> <laughs> I um I haven't had the opportunity to meet Russ or Sierra, but I have been in the same building when they're there. Okay. Um, right. but unfortunately, we're not able to meet them. But I mean, Haters. we can say on the record, off the record, I did see him walk through the hallway once, and so I was like, oh, okay, that's Russ, cool. Awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> but he had like four or five securities yeah. around him, whatever. But yeah. nah, he's mainly there for the kids. But yeah, so I do that. And then, um, of course, photography and then uh, the podcast. So yeah, kind of. Oh, and a, and a father too. So yeah, oh, wow. look at this. Kind of full plate. So, yeah. yeah. Say, how do you find the time? Right. <laughs> It's it's balanced now that I got a, a a teenager, so it's um she's learning photography too, so it's kind of fun oh. in the sense of where um and the time is balanced either way. So I, either way it goes, I'm gonna find time to find uh, work on my passion, and then um, also work and then get things done. So yeah. Pause. I would not have known that you had a teenage age child. Yeah, I would not a lot have of, known. A lot of a lot of people say that. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's a black thing. <laughs> black don't crack. Yeah, word, <laughs> word. So, yep, yep. That's it. That's what I do. That's cool. it. I, yeah, you got a lot. Yeah. I what? Okay, so I'm an executive assistant for this startup real estate team. Um, I, I was like unemployed for the whole entire pandemic, and then found this really awesome position uh, with these two real estate dudes who are doing a great job and I'm learning so much about entrepreneurship through them and they're like starting a podcast well restarting it and okay. it's just been really it's crazy because we're like building the ship as it sails mm. so it's really pushing my skills but also again I, I look at jobs as like going to school and like intern like you're getting paid to learn and that's exactly what I do every day is I go in and I help these guys and then they help me and I learn so, so much. Are That's you gonna... funny you say that, Casey, because like I worked at a movie theater and I had no way of thinking that it was uh, trying to learn anything because I was just trying to get free movies <laughs> <laughs> and get a check. And so like, yeah, that's that's interesting you said that because I worked at a movie theater for about like throughout high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, But did you I like get... learn like scheduling and like how to like be on time. Like I'm sure that oh, they yeah. you some type of customer service skill that yeah. you need like in life and your business. Like that's how absolutely. I just look at everything. Like no, every absolutely. opportunity is a learning opportunity. Mm. Absolutely. But me, young minded and stupid, I was there for getting the free movies. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I will say though, I learned how to how to start movies though, like the projections and stuff. Okay. I, I still know how to slice film and do all that stuff. So yeah, there you yeah go. I don't know why I still know how to do that, but I yeah. always think Taco Bell because I know how to roll a mean burrito. She does. She taught me how to. You nice taught me tight. how to roll a burrito. <laughs> that's hard. That's, I can yeah, barely hold a taco, that's, especially yeah, when it's real. stuffed. When that's, you know what when I'm that saying? thing is full. I'm telling you guys. How long were you at go. Taco Bell for? Oh, mm, probably like a year or two, maybe even that's more than time. that. Like on and off. Yeah, I worked there in college. Mm. Then I just kind of was like. Up. I don't want to do this anymore. Bye, guys. Did you walk out with a burrito, though? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, I'm not proud I'm of out. how I left there, so. <laughs> oh, okay. I just yeah, like did you? Didn't show up again. Oh, uh, so you didn't get a burrito. Jobs, you just do that. <laughs> yeah. They just called me and they were like, Do you even want to work here anymore? And I was like, Not really. And he's like, oh, That's <laughs> real. And I was like, Oh, awesome. Thank you. I don't have to come in today. Or ever again. <laughs> Weight off your chest. Talk about a mutual like understanding. Break up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Are you even <laughs> interested? No, I'm not. All right, cool. Well, it was nice. It was nice having you. <laughs> um, Casey, I wanted to ask with this company, the startup that you're working with, if, um, they're starting a podcast. Are you able to help them do that? Um yeah. as like a producer or just like with the, you know, knowledge that you have? Yeah, it's so crazy because it reminds me of the glow up. Their focus is to uh, be, bring the good news into Seattle. And they highlight a lot of entrepreneurs, but like at a super high level. And um, they're, they are asking me to help with producing and just 
all of the creative stuff. I came into that job just they wanted somebody who can create systems and and be the assistant. And I love helping people. I love being that, that assistant to everyone. But um, they do see my they they allow me to be Miss Casey Carter as well. So it's really fun that they are allowing me into this new project and somewhat trusting me to to assist them with this. That's awesome. Um, so we know, <clears throat> we know a little bit about like your podcast. It's kind of to help um, entrepreneurs and give advice and tips. Um, but what really inspired you guys to start the Glow Up and with that mission or niche? Yeah, and... yeah. Because it's kind of I... perfect. <laughs> I take a, I... I take away a lot. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. No, like... I do. I really do. My, I've always just been a person who wants to help other people. I hate when somebody knows something and they don't pass along, I hate gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. And I've just, when podcasts started popping, I got approached by a producer and he asked to do one, shout out to Keith of the Soundcasting Network. And I was just like, I didn't know what podcasts were, so I passed on it. Luckily, I started listening to podcasts and he was still down to do one. Um, I was just like the glow up, that sound, you know, that's what the podcast is gonna be about. You listen to this and you glow up. It didn't really, the content wasn't really about that in the beginning. And once I was able to do the podcast and kind of reevaluate everything, we really pivoted and took ownership of what the show is about. And that's highlighting entrepreneurship and art and things like that. Um, Mo's been a part of the po podcast since day one, just came along to take pictures. I mean, he's said it multiple times. He's not a man of many words. He likes to be behind the scenes, but he's totally stepped in and got comfortable being behind the mic. And he's been here through it all and just been my partner in this. So it's just been amazing. And I think we're doing a really great job at trying to help entrepreneurs in all different avenues. I think you can listen to the show and maybe we'll have a um, cook on the show, but you don't want to be a cook, but that cook will say some things to you that can relate to you um, in your business that you can take away. So it, yeah. it's been really great. And that's so true. It's like, you know, different experience in different industries, whatever, you can still learn so much from that and apply it towards yours. Like you can make it your own. And that's something that I've definitely been learning. Like, uh, I probably could use this or probably participate in that, but I don't have that background. I don't have that experience. But my, what I do know and what I do have, I'm bringing to the table. Exactly. You know, I can still bring what I, what my experience and talents are to the table, even though it might not align right away. We're all trying to get it in some type of way. And it's crazy that every week when we do these shows, like, I mean, we do them at the end of the week and we could have had like the longest week. We're tired. Like we all went through so much last year and then we do the show and it's like, wow, that person took us to church. Like mm. Naomi and I were always getting goosebumps. It was just like every week of like fulfilling your soul. And it was just, it was a crazy thing, but we're so glad that we finally, this is like what you hear today is exactly where I saw the show four years ago, but it took all that time to get to exactly where we are today. We needed that. Yeah. See, and I love hearing, I, right, I love hearing stuff like that too, because I think about that with our show and our podcast. It's like, you know, we're almost three years into, we're three years into this now. Like, yeah, you know, and we're still learning and changing and like, well, what's finding out what's working and what's not working. And yeah. And that, that feeling of like having a guest that really inspires you. Yes. Oh, uh, there are some guests that we've had. I'll be like, dang, let's go do another episode now. Cause I just feel like revved up and ready mm -hmm. to go. Um, and I feel like we never have someone that's like doing the same thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they inspire Definitely. me for different reasons, you know? Um, Maurice, I actually, I actually wanted to ask you about um, kind of what Casey brought up was that yeah. like you're not really a man of many words, <laughs> and words. so I wanted to know <laughs> how did you you know get comfortable um, being behind the mic and like how does it impact your day to day? Like, do you feel more comfortable doing like speaking events or getting up and you know just raising your voice in other situations? Oh uh, yeah, speaking events, nah, that won't happen. <laughs> nah um it, it took a minute for sure but you know the ultimate um reason reasoning of talking is just not being comfortable 
for what I'm doing, stepping out of the box, uh, you know, um, I had to fill in at a time uh, with the Glow podcast and, you know, doing that helped me uh, step out of my shell and just get a little bit more comfortable with speaking and having people know who I am. And, um, and that was cool. And plus I got to sit down and meet some real dope people and talk to them and ask them some dope questions and get to know them more. And that just got comfortable with me. And at this point it got me moving to, you know, who's got next and uh, the platform that I'm building. And um, I have to talk through that. And so right. it's like, why would I start a platform if I don't even like talking, you know what I'm saying? So. It um it, it just taught me that, you know, you got to just step out your shell and speak up a little bit. People, you know, you're interesting to some people, not everyone, maybe, but some people. And I'll take that, you know, so I, know um, I don't see myself doing any speaking engagements and it, it probably wouldn't be fun. <laughs> but uh, just to be real, though, like it just got me comfortable out of my zone. And um, yeah, it works day to day. I, I talk more than I have been talking, but I still like being behind the scenes, but I feel it, that. It's cool. So yeah. I feel that. But I think Mo has also taught me a lot too of like, I mean, I've always been a talker. Like I've been talking since I learned how to talk. And Same, sis. <laughs> shut me up. <laughs> yes. But both Naomi and Mo, they are like, Naomi talks very, very well too, but they're both, uh, they're very, they, they take their time with things and um, they, they, they use, I, what, how do I want to say this? They they watch more than they speak. Mm. They observe That's a fact. more. Yes. And That's a fact. for me, they've helped me learn about myself with like, okay, like that's great. That's your personality and you get things done that way. But like I've kind of evolved a little bit in slowing down more, kind of observing, being quiet and then pulling the trigger. They've definitely helped me in that way too. It, it took a lot of it took a lot of studying too, also to realize that you know who I was, you know. So I mean, I had to step back and be like, "Yo, you're always damn quiet. You gotta speak up sometimes, you know. You can't just be quiet over everything." So yeah, yeah. And plus, patience is a real big big thing for me, and I, I like analyzing and looking at a lot of things before I even jump into anything. So it took it took a minute, even when Casey approached me and said, "Yo, you trying to? I need your help. You talk about this." And I was like, "Okay, let me sit back for a month." No, nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm so but... forceful. <laughs> I'm like, do it. Come on, we're gonna. I don't even like let them decide. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, she was like, this. "Mo, Mo, we're you're talking next week." I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm down." That's, I mean, that's but, just how I learn. Like, I'm like, throw me in the fire and I'll figure yeah, it. But out. But I needed so, that though. I needed yeah. that because you know sometimes you're gonna get in those situations and so and that right. motivated me to start my own platform and you know so I, I take a lot of credit for her just pushing me off the cliff to jump in and you know I'm here I'm still doing it and uh Yay. yeah even though Naomi's quote unquote the co-host I was the co-host before she was the co-host you know what I'm saying so <laughs> oh, you, know, I see. you know what's yeah. funny I could kind of hear that because when I gave Naomi Naomi's little like intro as co-host you know when I was like you know give us a little something Mo you and you said to you like I'm a co-host of the of the podcast like, oh that's it like, that I get a little sass oh, to I it I heard I, it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I heard it too, yeah. Casey. My bad. They, I didn't oh, mean I to hear do it that. All the time. They be beefing. <laughs> I'd be like, you guys stop it. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you go back to episode, what is it, 55? I don't know. I'm just joking. But yeah, it no, was it's all love. Yeah, it it's all, all love at the end of the day. She's killing it. So yeah, no. Nah, and she's yeah. going to be a new mom. I wanted to say that about her. Yeah, so yeah for congrats her. to her. Baby, Congratulations. So. A glow up baby. I love it. Yes. Yeah, that, that is, is so that's, cool. that's huge. Congrats to her. And um, I hope that baby's baking wonderfully. <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. He's growing. <laughs> Um, so touching on you guys, you know, you earlier kind of said that sometimes you guys would leave the conversation and, um, you have chills or, you know, you just take away a lot. You feel so good. What, what has been your favorite guest or like episode to record? And, um, you know, it could be topic matter or just conversation that really touched or inspired you, but what, what have you taken away, um, from those kinds of like episodes? Uh, well, I, there was one episode we had. It was just fun. I, I It was fun. We talked about, what was it, Casey? The Insecure episode we talked about? And then it just got crazy because Nacho was there. 
Oh Remember my that? god, that was like back that was in the after that, like, that was after so the day ago. party we went to or something. Oh man, like, the conversation was just hilarious and it was crazy. See, that's how the episodes used to be because all the guys used to take over and it would just like turn into this bro crap. And I <laughs> but but see, but then no, because then Cause you guys Jarvis would always not. Too. Then you guys would always pick on me about whoever I'm talking to or whatever or whatever whatever the situation is. Anyway. No, it, those were fun. Those were fun. Yeah, those, I, those and were I fun. I do remember that, but for but, <laughs> like, but for me, yeah. But my favorite of... episode was the Jake one episode. He's, I knew you were gonna say he's, that. He's we need to get my, him back on. Yeah, he's one of my favorite producers from Seattle, and okay, like I actually got to meet him, hear the interview, actually talk to him after questions, so forth, and it inspired me because he's from the city. He's working with top artists and he's grinded and hearing his story of how he was grinding and working with everyone in the city motivated me mm. with my work and even photography moving forward. Um, and then I'll also say the Jordan Nichols, Nicholson episode as well. Uh, you know, he's a local photographer here in Seattle and he's killing it, doing big things. And, you know, he has a disability and it's not stopping him from chasing his goals and his dreams. And that, that motivated me and I took that away as well. So those wow. are two of my favorite, favorite episodes. And all the other ones are great too, but those are just two highlights that, you know, some I'm passionate about and I love and those two like motivated me to move forward. So, yeah. I think for me, it's so hard because within this past year, so before pre-COVID, we only interviewed people who were local to Seattle or were visiting. And now with the pandemic, it changed everything. We had to pivot and we started doing virtual interviews and doing them from the comfort of our own home, which I absolutely love. And yeah. we were able to open up and talk to so many great, notable people. Um, so I don't really have like a favorite because again, like I said, every week I would be brought to that same feeling of like, oh my God, like I oh, I always felt like I was in the right moment at the right time talking to the mm. right person and they were speaking to me. Um, so I would say check out the past eight months of episodes and mm. you will not hear an episode that won't move you. I will say we've had an incredible list of, or an, yeah, an incredible list of black strong women on the show as of late. I don't know how That's they're finding fact. us, but it is this group of really amazing black women who have been on the show this past pandemic. And just those are all my favorite episodes. Like I could listen to those all the time. Motivating. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're so motivating and all the resiliency and strength and just the 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 desire to to fix a problem and now they're they made a business out of it. It it's been incredible. So it's no like real selecting your favorite. It's like selecting your favorite kid. Like, who's your favorite kid? I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know whatever. what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. My mom always says, you're my favorite kid. You're like, you're my favorite daughter named Jasmine. And it's like, well, I'm your only one. So, of course, I'll be your favorite one named that. That's how you do it. <laughs> Got it. <Love> it. <laughs> I want to be like, I'm definitely the favorite, but... I know, but I you can't really say that. Play, feathers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys actually did a podcasting month, like full, like, was it a full four weeks or was it five weeks? It was full four weeks. Okay. <laughs> so one of my ideas that I was like, we're doing this. <laughs> loved that. Um, definitely appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys for doing that because mm -hmm. I was like, out walking the dogs trying to get that one in. I was like, I need all the tips and tricks mm -hmm. and all the advice. Um, and I really just loved hearing what you guys had to say. Um, and I guess with this question, um, what what would be like your biggest piece or like your number one piece of advice for people looking to break into podcasting or who maybe are already breaking into podcasting um, that you would pull from like that month? Well, I would, I don't know if we said it, I, I'm sure we did, but I mean, you guys even said it too, like, it's okay to evolve. It's okay to change. Like, that's one thing. I think we get so caught up in things having to be perfect. And mm. I think the one thing people have to remember is not a bazillion people are seeing your final product. Like, it's okay. Like, ain't nobody all watch. Not to be like, ain't nobody watching, but like, not everyone is seeing it. And it's mm -hmm. okay to, to change and be consistent. 
And then you just got to get along with the people you're doing this shit with. Like, oh, I'm sorry. You got to get along with the people that you're doing this with. Um, because if that connection and that friendship is not there, it's just going to be hard. It's going to mm. be very, mm. very hard to do it. Um, I mean, those are like the base for me that I'm always like, these things you have to make sure you're doing and don't, don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. You, you'll mm. get there. You'll figure it out. Our show has evolved so much. Yeah. I mean, just to, to piggyback on that, but you know, also just do it, you know, yeah. just execute and do it. Like, I feel like every, if you say you're going to do something with no plan it, it's you failed already. So, I mean, mm. just go ahead and do it um don't be hesitant and again what casey was saying you know not everybody's gonna peep it but the more consistent you are and the more you branch out with your ideas with the podcast um the more will pay attention and listen so you just got to get up and do it make sure you have a great team with you um and then you know see where it goes from there plan and do the after work well. yeah and yeah and promote like don't just do it and then like all right i'm done i know it's tiring like gosh i did all this work it's so much but it doesn't stop there you have to promote you have to market yourself mm -hmm. and i think that's one part is that a lot of people they just put a product out and just wait for people to take a bite out of it mm -hmm. and you know it, it really does not work you're competing with so many podcasts right. and, and they just want that instant success you know like they want it like real quick, it's real overnight. Real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not gonna happen that way. You just gotta keep pushing. Like I, I had that mindset too, even with my photography. Like I wanted people to like my stuff right away. It's not gonna happen. Cause you know, you, if you don't keep practicing, keep going and keep going, then they'll, you know, they're not gonna pay attention. But if you keep doing that, they will pay attention. So right. you just gotta keep pushing, man. Just keep pushing. Ain't that a song? Keep on pushing. That's a that's a song, right? I'm thinking pushing. high school musical. Uh, what? <laughs> pushing, pushing to the to the limit, limit. limit. That was jump. Oh, whatever. Something jump like that. Jump in or you something. Got that was Corbin, Corbin Blue. Blue. He was in high school it. musical. He was. That's that's the connection. <laughs> All right. Sorry, that was random. Where? How did we get there? <laughs> he said pushing. <laughs> it was a song. Um, I really resonate with that advice that you guys gave just um, doing it and mm -hmm. the consistency piece, especially because for us, it was literally a matter of us just doing it. I was like, we're not talking about it anymore. We have the microphone. We've got the idea. Let's go. Let's do it. And the first episode was really bad. And I think yeah. that that's like one thing that I always say. I'm like, that first episode is going to be really rocky. But that's a great benchmark. Like, yeah. you can only go up from there. You're going to learn literally. so much from that first episode. You know? <laughs> Um, and you know, because we've continued to be consistent and like, we've noticed like, okay, when we first started, we were like, whenever we can record, we'll put something out. And now we're like, no weekly is going to be what makes this we're doing. Off. Yeah. Um, and just to see that growth, like, you know, the mistakes that we made from like episode one to like only putting an episode out every month to now that like we're weekly, um, Fire. and and we feel that growth and it's like we feel like we're like just right there on that cusp you know of like i don't want to say making it but like more people knowing us like yeah it always surprises me when people are like oh yeah like i meet people and they're like oh you're tay from the way with jazz and tay and i'm like oh my god you're like i what? am what <laughs> i am how do you know me and they're like i listen to the podcast obviously and i'm like oh that's right thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want to seem corny, but like you're saying like people, you know, like a lot of people aren't listening, but there are people that are listening and you'll be surprised at those people who are and they really will stick with you. Um, yes. So that's always great and really motivating to keep pushing, just finding those people who are your champions and then like rocking with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like one win is the best feeling in the world really it really is mm -hmm. one win is the best feeling in the world so yeah keep going man Just we talked going. about um CeeLo green on one episode and then we like added him in our story and he reposted it and everything and we were like on this high we were like maybe he'll listen to our podcast now because he knows that we're talking about him like yeah that's fire <laughs> his daughter <laughs> I look at all of those things as like signs from the universe. Like they don't just happen to happen. Like when somebody yeah. walks up to you and tells you they listen to your podcast, like 
it is an incredible feeling but that's the universe telling you like keep going mm -hmm. when when a celebrity or whoever sees you and you get high like that it's like it's the universe just really telling you these messages like you're yeah. on the right track and yeah. keep going absolutely yeah they'd be like what's up mo better i'd be like wait what Right. <laughs> oh, How do you know me? I definitely, up, I definitely know you and recognize you as Mobetta. Like yeah. when they said oh, Maurice, see? I was like, oh, that's his name. His name is actually Maurice. Yeah. Okay. That was funny. That's funny. We know Casey, Miss Casey Carter. Yes. <laughs> right. <My> damn name. <laughs> right. Uh, funny. Um. But okay, so so that we have some time for our hot topic, because I think we might get into it. I'm not sure. We'll see how this goes. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you guys for sharing, you know, all that stuff about you, all the tidbits about podcasting and what it's been like for you guys. Um, so stay tuned. You guys are listening to The Way With Jazz and Tay.